G'day, it's Ryan the Lion from A Few Quiet Yarns, and I'm privileged and honoured to be sitting here with Sarah Trotman, who a lot of you will know from the days of the Small Business Expo, mm. uh, through to today with Spare My Super, and today we're having a yarn with, so could, uh, introduce yourself and let everyone meet the person, uh, not the suit, as we say, and give us a bit of an insight as you Absolutely. We, we wouldn't otherwise yeah. know. Yeah, no, very happy to do that, um, and there's a lot that people probably won't know about me, including that I left school at the bright old age of 15. And um, my mother said, if you don't get school C, you're leaving school. And so I got school C by three marks and she said, you're out anyway. So I, um, <laughs> I joined a business that I ended up running actually, a multi-million dollar business when I was um, 26. And um, I had 30 staff at that time. Wow. And then when I was pregnant with my second child, I've got two wonderful children, Matilda yes. and Elliot. Um, when I was pregnant with Elliot, um, the business was sold and I went off to run the free business mentor program. So the business mentor program, we were mentoring about um, 5,000 businesses a year wow. and met so many exceptional business owners. In terms of me personally, uh, I think I've got an entrepreneurial heart. Um, so it was a great thrill to recently launch uh, Spend My Super. Um, I grew up in Wellington and moved to Auckland when I was about 18 years old and um, qualified as a legal executive, did the diploma course or a certificate or something at um, uh, University of Auckland yes. uh, in a certificate in general management and have been in the business world for 30-odd um, for years. I didn't take much of a break um, mm. from uh, the workplace, the paid workplace, when I had my two children. Um, and they don't seem to have suffered too much. There was a wonderful article and stuff about me actually mm. two weeks ago, and, and the reporter said, wrote that I had said that I was a good enough mother, and frankly, being a good enough parent is good enough. I don't need to be a perfection uh, when it comes to parenting. I, I like it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that, that good enough aspect um, and enables uh, your children or anyone's children to find their own feet. If you were a perfect parent, then maybe it might end up being a little bit more like what they call helicopter parenting. Yeah, I mean, my children have a great deal of resilience. Mm. Um, they are out making a life for themselves. Matilda's in Sydney, Alex's um, second year at top of his class at Otago University. He'll be very cross that I've oh, told you that. I was say, oh, mum. <laughs> But given that I didn't ever notice any great uh, brightness when he was at school, I have to say it's all been quite a nice surprise for us. And what, what subject? Uh, so he's studying surveying. Oh, wow, yeah. yes, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty lovely, isn't it, seeing your kids go out into the world and start finding their own place in the mm. world. But yes, my children are incredibly resilient um, and have been incredibly supportive of my, uh, of my career as well. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's a brilliant time to segue into question two. What's keeping you busy? And look, there's a huge element of leadership that I'm really intrigued to hear you share um, yourself. Um, share with us. Well, the first thing that springs to mind when it comes to leadership, I got this most wonderful phone call, possibly eight years ago now, maybe a bit longer, from the wonderful Sir Ron Carter. Sir Ron rang and said, oh, look, um, we've not... We've not met before, but we'd like you, uh, I represent the Black Trust, the Sir Peter Black Trust, and I'd like you to come to Wellington and receive an award for leadership. And I said, thank you very much, Sir Ron, hung up and promptly Googled leadership. I hadn't realised that I was a leader, but, um, you know, that, of course, took me yeah. on a wonderful journey of um, better understanding what leadership is and, and meeting these incredible leaders over the country. Mm -hmm. And um, for me... Leadership's very much about having a courageous vision. It's about having a real impatience to see that vision implemented. It's about having an ability to mobilise a team and bring a team team with you on that journey. And then something my mother uh, would uh, say was um, navel-gazing for me is very much having a good sense of uh, who you are as an individual, um, a good sense of self, an ability to look outside of yourself and see a world where you can make a better place. She's a great woman, my mother, by the way. Just back yes. to question one. Yes. <laughs> I used to think all she did was lie in the bath giving orders to her five children, but I have to say, now that I've come through parenting myself, she's a pretty exceptional woman and probably uh, my greatest role model. She really is um, She's 78 now and still doing, um, you know, the best walks in New Zealand. And we can't, in fact, she's programmed in my phone as Jill, you can't stop her Trotman. That probably <laughs> sums up 
uh, my mother and her energy. And shout out to dad as well, who's the most um, incredible person. In fact, speaking of, just again going back to question one, one, yes. um, one of the things that um, a lot of people don't realise is that dad actually um, was the first exporter of software in New Zealand. So oh. he wrote, yes, wow. I know, there incredible. We go. He's just amazing. So um, he had a computer bureau and he wrote a software program for the Reserve Bank, which transferred us uh, around the decimal currency. Mm. And he exported that over to the Bank of England. Um, or a bank in England uh, at the time that they went through that decimal transfer as well. So um, he is also an entrepreneur and um, a very special person who's been a great dad to his five well, kids. There you go. I never thought there was going to be anything about tech in this, uh, in this <laughs> yarn, um, but you've surprised me there quite nicely there because uh, that, is, that is probably one of New Zealand's key stories around tech, uh, um, yeah, the first he, exporter. Yeah. Um, he's He's a very special man. Um, what else can I tell you about what I'm doing? It's been my super, which in essence encourages 600,000 uh, superannuants in New Zealand to stop and reflect about whether they might be able to contribute something uh, to 12 charities that we've selected, mm. each with a particular focus on children living in financial poverty here in New Zealand. And one thing I've got to tell you about Spend My Super, which is why I leapt on board with Liz, is 100% of the money that we raise goes directly to the charities. And we've done thorough due diligence on those 12 charities, yeah. um, including, of course, measuring the impact that they are making. So well, that, that, That's absolutely amazing. I'm intrigued to hear what standing for local government means for you, but um, there's something that's driving you to do something for the good of the uh, community, I feel. There is, and I must confess, there are some days where I think, what have I done? <laughs> But I just decided that actually we all have a responsibility to step up um, and use the skills, networks and strategic smarts that we've got for the good of the nation. And it just sort of made sense. I think that it takes quite a lot of courage to um, a stand for council. You know, full kudos to everyone in council from um, you know, team members right through to the councillors, the mayor, mm. everyone going. Mm. So, on to the third question. What's your AFQI experience like? I have oh. to say, if I can interrupt you, yeah. Ryan, I've had a fear of missing out. I keep seeing these amazing <laughs> events on LinkedIn and, oh, I would have really liked to have gone to that. So, when is the next one? Well, um, so September 19th. Will that one be work okay for the calendar? Absolutely. I promise to be there because, Excellent. as I say, I'm sick of this fear of missing out. Your events look amazing. And it's, Thank you very much. And do you know what I really like about them? You don't have a speaker. You just go yeah. and mix and mingle with yeah. the crowd and, you know, something might come of it. You know. Yeah, and I, I do. Color, so <laughs> I do know. Well done. I'm impressed. Yeah. I'm very impressed. Thank you. Um, so, with that, so we'll book in the September 19th and... We'll move on to our last and final question, which I think is a, um, I think a bugbear for a lot of people, even the ones that don't vote, but the low voting turnout. Mm, mm. Where do we start with that? What are your thoughts? Um, in Waitemata, where I'm standing, I think it sits at about 41%, which is actually one of the highest rates of voter really? turnout for local body elections across um across Auckland sits typically at about sort of 35 to 38 percent so really important that people actually take the time to get to know candidates to read their bios when the voting papers come out to make sure you're enrolled um, but low voter turnout is a real concern I think and and you know it might be that people feel a bit um uh, disillusioned. Uh, there are a number of reasons why one should be out, you know, voting. Yes. So, and you asked me earlier, actually, off camera, what my biggest contribution would, that, you know, what's the biggest contribution yeah. I'd like to make in the council environment? And I think probably the contribution that I can, the experience that I bring around business support mm and engagement with local business, I think is going to be really valuable. Affecting positive change. So yeah. well, thank you so much for all your time. Oh, it's, it's been, been a great pleasure. pleasure. It's yeah. been a real pleasure, Ryan. And thank you for the great work that you do. Well, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, you. See you later.